Distance learning means students are learning from where they are and cannot meet in the usual physical classroom. There are lots of ways we can reach these students, and what you decide to use should be what will work best for you and your students. Let's go through the following options. Print, audio, televisual, multimedia, online, mobile, and blended. The oldest form of distance education is print-based. Print-based distance learning means the materials for the course, the readings, the assignments, and the assessments, or the tests, are sent to the students in the mail. They also return their work through the mail. Students do not require much technology, just writing utensils, but they do need to be very motivated to complete the work. Print works well for remote areas with limited or no internet. Audio-based distance education relies on radio or recordings like CDs, cassette tapes, or audio files. Students need a radio or playback device. Audio works really well with a technique called interactive audio instruction that guides students through a lesson. For example, it will explain a lesson topic, then ask students to complete an activity, then resume with a summary. Audio has the added benefit of being quite accessible as it doesn't rely on literacy skills. Televisual distance education combines audio and visual elements, and that helps students visualize concepts that can be hard to understand in just text or audio alone. It's also similar to traditional school environments, as students can see the teacher or the board, and that can be more engaging. Students do have to have access to a device to access the channel or to play the video if it's recorded. One big disadvantage of this approach is the cost to make and receive the instruction. Multimedia-based distance education includes CDs and digital learning games. The technology needed varies depending on the format. Most multimedia learning tools include interactivity and support different cognitive approaches to teaching and learning, like including audio and visual content with games or quizzes. Digital games in particular make learning feel more like entertainment than work. Multimedia learning tools can also work without the internet. They are, however, challenging and expensive to make, do require some digital literacy skills, and sometimes require specialized, costly tools to use. Fully online learning can be done with a class of students, it can be done with the guidance of a single support person like a tutor, or it can be done completely on your own in an unfacilitated learning environment such as CD courses. Typically, for online learning, students need an internet connection and a device to access the content. The content can include a range of things like readings, audio files, video recordings, interactive activities, games or quizzes. Anything you can put on the internet can go into an online course. It can be expensive to create courses and they can be hard to access. Although, many organizations and schools are now creating free online courses called MOOCs that students can access from anywhere in the world simply by creating an account. Mobile learning means you're learning on a phone or a mobile device, and this is an option for many students in remote areas with low connectivity. It includes many of the same options as fully online learning, but is usually offered in smaller chunks as learning from a mobile device is challenging due to the screen size. It can bring together audio, visual, and interactive elements, and due to the nature of it being on a phone, can include a communication channel to other students or the teacher, if the course has one. For DD Academy, we prioritize mobile learning approaches because most of our Afghan students are mobile learners. All these distance learning options work especially well when combined with a communication option where the students get to talk to others about the course. For example, a WhatsApp or Signal channel or a Zoom call where the students can talk about what they read or the workbook they completed, a space where they can share some of the work they've done on their own and ask questions. So in summary, there are many different options for distance learning, and the first steps are to think about what you can manage as a teacher and what will work best for your students in their current living and learning situation.